Hello, everybody. I love the Lord God. I'm so thankful to him and so grateful for him that he's always in the fire with me. We're in the Celebrate Recovery Room, and Jesus Christ is our higher power. In this room, we have principles and we have steps to help us recover. We must work these principles and steps in order to recover. So I'm going to read principle seven to you and then I'm going to read step 11 to you. Principle seven, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. Step 11, sort through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will and power to carry it out. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Now I will introduce myself. Hello, I am Carol, and I am a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. And my biggest struggle is sugar foods, lack of sleep, lack of energy, and A through Z, which creep in at various times in my life. When I say A through Z, I mean anger, gossip, that's a G, J, jealousy, P, profanity, etc., etc., etc. Our lesson tonight is entitled Relapse. So, what makes me relapse? Why, of course, the devil makes me do it. I listen, I follow him right into relapse. Or is it uh, lust of the flesh? That has a very strong hold on me and tugs on me, causing me to relapse. Now I have to admit something to each of you, and that is that I have no willpower, none at all, and that makes me relapse. Now in life, we can give a yes answer or we can give a no answer. And my no switch is faulty, and I do believe it's broken. Thus, I cannot say no to the vice that causes me to relapse. Oh, here's another reason. Friends and family encourage and persuade me to join them. I begin the evening with very good intentions, but I cave in to their persuasion. No matter what, who, why, or where, I relapse. And then I hate myself. And I cannot stop indulging once more in my addictive behavior. I struggle to get my abstinence or sobriety back. Most times I just give up. I obsess until I can't bear it any longer. The sugar or my other vice calls and I answer. My, ex my addiction is socially acceptable. People are always gathering, usually three times a day, for their meals. When friends and family gather, the meal is topped off with desserts or a cordial drink. And these are the words that follow. Please, take one more piece, just one more drink. I baked it or bought it just for you. Feeling obligated and now wanting to hurt, not wanting to hurt my host's feelings, I surrender. But not such a big surrender or decision. However, because all along, I have wrestled with this behavior since childhood, and I partake, partaking into a cycle that I am unable to break or escape. 
It has been said, I have another drink in me, but don't know if I have another recovery. Once the alcoholic has the gift of sobriety, they learn not to return to the bar. Certain friendships must be broken, and all other areas of their life where liquor calls, they must abstain from. The foodaholic have steps they too must take. One area for me would be church buffet socials. Always the dessert table is smothered with favorite delicacies. Thus, I call it the trigger table. I may be strong at the time, but the vision of sugar plums continues to dance in my head after I leave and go home. Question, what is your addiction? What is your trigger? Can you relate to anything I have just said? Easter comes with a basket full of sweets. Thanksgiving with all of the trimmings. Christmas, and I don't have to tell you, you already know. A lot of memories, good, some bad. Disappointments, loneliness. I'll not hop further on. Sobriety, gone. I have relapsed. Now I can boast. The holidays made me do it. Do what? Relapse. It's easy to slip back into old hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Holidays can bust into long periods of loss of sobriety and abstinence, or A through Z. One day at a time, I'm all alone. I feel sorry for myself. I miss certain family members, traditions, or holidays which bring back sad memories. Thus, I run to my comforts and my consolers, the things that make me temporarily numb. They deaden the pain. Some people go back to gambling and lost wages. The workaholic fills up his schedule the codependent goes back to unhealthy relationships. I stand here, a very sick little puppy. Romans 7, 15, 20. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me. That does it. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm Pentecostal, so I'm going to have to shout a little hallelujah in here. Thank God there is help. He cares and he understands and desires strongly to help us. He does not say to us, use a little willpower. He offers us his example and his power. At this point, 
don't throw in the towel. Rather, listen to Jesus. The first step in preventing a relapse is to admit that I will be tempted. Can we say it all together? I will be tempted. I am definitely not above temptation. Our Jesus was tempted. You can find that account in Matthew 4, 1 through 11. In my introduction, I stated, the devil made me do it. But the devil is not who I worship. I do not say to you tonight, hello, my name is such and such, and I am a believer and follower of the devil. And what a horrible thought, lest thing to say. Jesus was led out into the wilderness to be tempted there by Satan. For 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing and became very hungry. Then Satan tempted him to get food. He suggested changing stones and making them into loaves of bread. It will prove you are the son of God. But listen to how Jesus answered, no. No, for the scriptures tell us that bread won't feed men's souls. Obedience to every word of God is what we need. Next, Satan took Jesus to Jerusalem to the roof of the temple. Jump off, he said. Prove you are the son of God. And Jesus retorted, it also says not to put the Lord your God to a foolish test. Next, Satan took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the nations of the world and all their glory. I'll give it to you, he said, if you will kneel and worship me. But Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. The scriptures say, Worship the Lord God, obey only him. Satan goes away, the angels come, and they care for Jesus. The test was over, the devil left. Jesus was tempted. He never sinned, but he was tempted. Mark 14, 38 tells us, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so now we get to our acrostic tonight. Did everyone get the piece of paper with, um, for the lesson tonight? That piece of paper is for the purpose of us writing on. So as I go through the acrostic, we're supposed to write on the piece of paper the answer to what you see on your paper. Did I make that clear? So there should be a pencil in front of you maybe, or a pen around you. Our acrostic tonight is relapse. The R equals reserve a daily quiet time. I'll repeat, the R equals reserve a daily quiet time a time of opening up the scriptures and uncovering just who this God is that I have given my heart to. Jesus quoted the scriptures to Satan. As you use this quiet time for purpose of reading the word of God, studying it, digesting it, and discussing them with God, then meditate on them and God will direct your path. Our souls cannot live or function without this daily, special, and appointed time with God. Tempted, admitting to God myself and another human being that I can be tempted, I am in a serious battle. The next word in our acrostic reminds us of step 10, E, evaluate. E, evaluate. Let me recap 
what we talked about in the last two lessons. Your evaluation needs to include your physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual health. Daily ask yourself if you are hurting, exhausted. Now, I told you all that I don't sleep at night, and so I have to answer this and say, Lord, I wake up in the morning and I am so exhausted, I don't know how I'm going to get through this day. Angry, resentful, tense. This is a heart check. H for hurting, E for exhausted, A for angry, R for resentful, T for tense. A heart check. If you answer yes to any of the above, just use the tools you have learned in recovery to help you get back on track. We find specific instructions in Romans 12, 3 through 17. Be honest in your estimate of yourselves. Hate what is wrong. Stand on the side of the good. Love each other. Be patient in trouble. Do things in such a way that everyone could see you are honorable. Daily practice of 10, step 10 maintains your honesty and your humility. Moving along, L on your piece of paper. You're supposed to be writing now. L for listen. Listen to your higher power. He is Jesus Christ. We need to take time out from the world's rat race long enough to listen to our bodies, minds, and souls. We need to slow down enough to hear the Lord's direction. Thessalonians 5.21 says, test everything that is said to be sure it is true, and if it is, then accept it. Another version of the Bible called the message says it this way, don't be gullible, Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out anything tainted with evil. The letter A relapses a long acrostic. The letter A stands for alone and quiet time. The first part of step 11 says we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. In principle three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to God's care, and in principle four, we confessed our sins to him, and in principle five, we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Now in principle seven, in order to keep your recovery growing, you need to have a daily quiet time with Jesus. Even he, even Jesus spent time alone with his father, and we need to do the same. Set a daily appointment time to be alone with God so that you can learn to listen carefully. Learn how to hear God. As a new babe in Christ, being discipled by mature Christians, I learned this truth. I was 30, a full-time working mother with a 10-room home a husband who deserted me and his children. I plugged in 5 to 6 a.m., giving this time the Lord's time. And I have kept to the best of my ability this time. I seek him first. That time may not work for you. But use wisdom and plug in a time of alertness to be alone with the best father and friend you will ever have. To be the, with the best father and friend you will ever, ever, ever have. Psalm 46.10 tells us, and God is the speaker, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Step 11 uses the word meditation. Meditation simply means slowing down long enough to hear God. And with practice, you will begin to realize the value of spending time alone with him. 
The enemy will use whatever he can to disrupt your quiet time. He will allow you to fill your schedule with so many good things that you burn out or do not have the time to keep your appointment. The enemy loves it when he keeps us from growing and from working on the most important relationship of our lives. I can attest to how many interruptions will draw your time away from the voice of God. Text messaging and my children's interruptions are but a few. Psalm 1-1 tells us, happy are those who find joy in obeying the law of the Lord. They study it day and night. They are like trees that grow besides a stream that bear fruit at the right time. The next letter is P, plug. Got your pens and pencils out? P, plug. Plug into God's power through prayer. Plug into God's power through prayer. I have heard many people, I got itch. I have heard many people ask the question, why did God allow that to happen to me? Have you ever asked him that question? Well, did you pray and seek God's will and guidance before you plunged in and made the decision to get married or the decision to change your job or whatever the issue may be. God's guidance and direction can only start when our demands stop. We must stop demanding things of God, but not stop asking things of him. I have a prayer journal. I started in the year 2015, in which I place specific prayer requests using composition paper and a loose leaf binder. I make three columns. Column number one, I place the date I first made my request. Column two, I write out the exact nature of my request. In column three, the day the Lord answered my prayer and exactly how he answered it. I have a record of years of yes answers. I have a, a, a group of no answers. And some are still unanswered because of the nature that I have prayed of what I have prayed for. My binder has grown to three swollen inches. In Philippians 4, 16, Paul tells us to pray about everything, asking for God's perfect will in all of our decisions. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. The verse said his answers, his perfect will, not mine and not yours. Ours are imperfect and most often use prayer as a labor saving device, but I need to remind myself daily that God will not do for me what I can do for myself. Neither will God do for you what you can do for yourself. This is such an important part of reading, studying, and dissecting the word. Many, many people just read words in the Bible, but do not slow down to study, dissect what God's words actually mean for their life. We slow down long enough to allow the words to sink. We don't slow down long enough to allow the words to sink and how they apply individually to us. We race off, we place a check mark on the things to do list, accomplished. No, it's not accomplished. We have spoken we have read, we have studied, we have dissected, and now we need to hear the breath of God speak to us. We have spoken, we have read, we have studied, we have dissected, and now 
we need to hear the breath of God speak to us. He will translate his words in his book to our understanding so that we have clarity. We're direction, wisdom. Stick around long enough. God's best is yet to come. This is where you and God have a heart-to-heart -heart talk over what you have just studied and read. Oh, how I wish I could join you in your devotional time and teach you how to slow down to hear the breath of God. and accomplish your meeting with the master of the universe each day. Yes, 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 our God speaks to us today. In the year 2022, he will continue to speak to us until he comes again to receive his children. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Finally, the last letter in relapse is E. Write down your pen and pencil. Enjoy E, enjoy your growth, enjoy your growth. We need to enjoy our victories, rejoice in and celebrate the small successes along your road to recovery. First Thessalonians 5:16 to 18 tells us to be joyful always, pray at all times, be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants from you in your life in union with Christ Jesus. And remember to share your victories, no matter how small with others in your groups. Your growth will give others hope. Share your victories with the whole world. With daily practice of these principles and with Christ's loving presence in your life, you will be able to maintain and continue to grow in your recovery. Sometimes I want to take a vacation from my recovery or simply quit altogether. Holidays is one of those times. Have you ever felt that one way, one time or another? But let me assure you that relapse is very real. It does happen, and it can be very costly. I strongly urge you to take the actions that we talked about tonight to prevent relapse. One, here are some suggestions or some things to do to prevent relapse during the holidays and every day. One, pray and read your Bible daily. Establish a specific time of day to have your quiet time. Two, make attending your recovery meeting a priority. Stay close to your support team. If you find yourself saying, I'm too busy to go to celebrate recovery tonight, make time. Flee from whatever you are doing and come share your recovery. Three, if they are safe, spend time with your family. If they are not, Spend time with your church family or your celebrate recovery family. Best not be alone during the holiday season. Four, get involved in service, volunteer. You don't have to wait until you get to principle eight to start serving. These are just a few ideas and suggestions. Tonight, possibly in your small group, share other ways that you, with God's help, can prevent relapse in your recovery. Thank you for allowing me to share.